In this video trace, we're gonna look at three momentum candlestick patterns and rank them. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so let's quickly define momentum against mean reversion. Momentum is literally when price is pushing and pushing and pushing, and we want as traders to jump on that momentum in the expectation we get a continuation. Very simple. Uh, and the reason we want to do this is we want to find a sweet spot to jump on. What we don't want to do as traders is just pull the trigger, jump on at highs, the thing reverses, stops you out on a pullback, and then it goes to highs. Nothing more frustrating. So we want to time it a little bit and try to use some kind of price action or candlestick patterns to jump onto that momentum. Mean reversion, completely opposite. So when price is at highs, we think it's too high, we think it's going to rotate back to a mean. Whether that's a moving average, whether that's a or resistance level, support level, open, close, whatever it may be. In this case, we're looking at momentum. So we have a filtering process to bit bring these trades into our kind of awareness, and then they're pulling the trigger based on some kind of um, momentum panel stick pattern. Now, this is the, guys, I want you to kind of forget about the names of these things. The names of these things are fine. Whoever comes up with them, who cares? It is what it is, and the textbook tells you what, that's what the names are. But for me, the key to all these is to think about what is actually happening under the bonnet when you're looking and you're understanding what each candle is telling you. And also the position of the candles as well is super, super important. So what I mean by this, if we've got this rising three methods, very nice uh, kind of strategy, this textbook says it's gotta be this, it's gotta be three uh, candles lower, then we get another green candle. Fine, who cares what the textbook says? Just think about what that means for supply and demand and what's actually happening with the buyers and the sellers. And when you kind of think clearly and you step back and you don't just look at it as a price pattern and a little uh, pretty pattern that you see on your chart, you think, what does that actually mean for the participants of the market? What does it actually mean for the buyers? What does it mean for the sellers? What does it mean for the supply demand and supply demand imbalance? What does it mean for the chances of me getting on the direction? And what does it mean for me quantifying the risk? And if you can do that and wrap yourself up in that approach, then I feel that you just get way more progress. It definitely works for me, guys. When I think about price in that way, it helps me you know, get much more of a feel for the trade that I'm taking. Do I want to really take this trade? Do I want to dial the risk up on this trade? How do I want to allocate capital to this trade? Where's my stop loss gonna be? What's the risk? All these kind of things, it just helps. So what have we got here in this rising three methods? So textbook says we've got the green candle, three falling red candles, and then we get another green. Obviously vice versa if it's on the downside. This is a bullish uh, type of play, and you kind of would want to see it in this type of environment here. So with momentum, pause, it's continuation type play, uh, a momentum type play. And if you think about what's happening here, we've got demand, 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 push lots of demand coming up, really strong, and then we get three days, I'm assuming it's a daily candle, takes three days to undo that demand. Well, that's, what's that telling you? It's telling you, bam, we've got a lot of demand coming in, and all that's really happening is the buyers are backing off the throttle. And the sellers are there. There's always a seller's going to be around, guys. Buyer have to have, have to have a seller for every buyer. And it just takes three days. The buyers want to get a better price, better price. Then they get fed up and bang their back on the throttle again. Poof, off we go. So what's our entry for this kind of thing? Well, textbook probably tells you to go on the close here. Bit late for me that. I like to be a little bit more aggressive. You choose what works for you. But I like to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of either taking a break of this, so forming like a trend line like this and buying a break of that uh, intraday. And by the way, even if you're not an intraday trader, you're a swing trader, this is how you kind of prepare yourself. You see something you like, you put it into your ecosystem or into your kind of awareness, you draw a trend line as it's forming after day two and day three, you set an alert on that trend line, and then when it's alerted, well, off you come to your screen, you pull the trigger, or you set a limit order, whatever. You don't have to be late to the party. So anyway, I digress. Either a break of this, or sometimes I like to take which has been really good actually, is you know looking to buy when you see this low kind of taken out, the prior day's low taken out by the fourth day. Um, sometimes I prefer three days, and guys, if you're waiting for everything to be textbook perfect, you'll struggle. Now, there's a fine line obviously between being too loose and too tight with your methodology, but at the same time, understanding what's happening and putting the context of the drive. It's an absolute beast of a drive, massive loads of people stuck short, it's a stock, it's this, it's an interest rate, uh, interest rate announcement, it's driving the currency pair, whatever, something real fuels the fire. You're waiting for three, you're probably gonna get it. You might get one and a half days and it's bang, it's off again. And you're just waiting for that. So 
taking that entry with the stop button and the load. We'll hit the uh, screens in a moment and kind of show you some examples. Other one is a doji. Uh, pretty boring, I get, I guess, and pretty boring, I grant you. But it's where this is positioned is where it's so interesting. Because if it's in the middle of a range, who cares if a doji is here? Absolutely no one. All a doji is telling you in that situation is, nobody cares. Buyers have pushed up a bit, sellers have pushed it down a bit, we've opened, we've closed, we've done nothing. But if you get this doji after you've had a real rip to the upside, what's that telling you? That's telling you something really more interesting. And that's telling you, okay, well, the doji there, it's accepted. Price is accepted. This is interesting. You know, we haven't got any huge sellers hitting it. We've got buyers backing off the throttle again. We're thinking about what's happening. You know, the next day, we might then get the buyers back on the throttle. Because don't forget, guys, you know, buyers with the salgos, sellers with the salgos, aggressive side just wants a bargain. They have to weigh up the decision of what's my urgency, price sensitivity, time sensitivity. Price sensitivity, they're waiting. A little bit more sensitive on price, like, oh, you know, I've paid up, I've paid up, let me just wait. When they don't get the price they want, then they become time uh, urgent. Urgency becomes now, and it's getting okay what price again, and that's when you get the continuation. So that's something to consider as well. Third one is three white soldiers. Again, whatever the name, who cares what the name is? Three white soldiers, three black crows, I think they call it to the downside. Um, you know, I'm not that bothered about the textbook names for it. Again, think about what's happening with price. This is strength, only in the right position. No one cares if you're getting three solid green candles here, three white soldiers here, no one cares. However, people do care if we're getting them after a break of a flag, for example. Wow, nice, three white soldiers, a break of there. Now, one caveat with this is, the textbook says, this is strong, what we do is obviously get three white soldiers, we buy. I would never buy on day three at highs. Never, ever, ever. I don't care if it goes 10 days without me. The chance of that happening is slim. I'm waiting for my pullback. I've learned my lesson over the years, guys, that I just do not buy into strength after three days of strength. I might buy into strength as quick as I can, something like this, that's buying into strength, but I'm buying it early on. Buying into strength after three big green candles, to me, makes no sense. I've seen markets, even strong markets will rotate. There is a rotational element to every market. Sometimes you look at charts and you think, geez, that's a ripper. And every now and then, you know, you'll have massive up days, massive multiple up days, especially with some stocks, but it's rare. You know, three white soldiers is to me a good filter to say, hey, I've had this in the right price position. I like this because it's telling me sellers have had opportunity, but buyers are prepared to push for three solid days in a row and put three open to close good extension days. That's important, that's interesting. Because now what happens after that? Maybe you get three white soldiers and you get this kind of pullback scenario. Maybe you get your doji. You start to blend these together and look at what the big picture is telling you. If you struggle with the big picture, guys, a tip for you to step back a little bit, literally, slide your chair back, look at the chart and think, what is the price telling me? What is the chart telling me in terms of what the buyers are doing, what the sellers are doing, what's supply doing, what's demand doing, and think through each candle that's important. Don't waste your time doing every single candle, you'll be there forever. But just think, what's this telling me? Okay, we've broken out, we haven't pulled back, shorts are trapped, buyers are aggressive, day two, buyers by day three, wow, we're really aggressive. Now, what the likelihood of this is reversing on me could do, but where can I now massage this position to get a decent stop, get a good risk reward ratio, and a high probability of success you've got. And then thinking about where they're best I want to pull the trigger. Anyway, guys, let's hit the screens quickly. Let's look at some of these and some of the price positions. We can find them in some real world charts. I'll look at some. Uh, trades, I've taken some trades recently actually using this type of similar type of, of, uh, of trigger. So we'll show you those now. Let's go. All right, guys, so we hit the screens here and I've got a few examples for you. Uh, on this Euro Yen, we've got the uh, falling three methods. So just like the rising three methods on the screen, but this one caught my eye. Daily chart, Euro Yen. Big solid red candle, three greens. Look how far they're not encroaching into that day's range. That's the key part of it. Same for on the flip side. Pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. And then actually you get one more little red here before it finally rolls over and does uh, you know, a further capitulation into lows. So that's um, not a bad example of that. Another one I've got in here at Shopify, just showing you the kind of power of the doji. 
and the doji pretty poor on its own if i'm honest talked about that but if you see it in the context of this i.e we're at fresh highs we've broken to highs we've consolidated now we push to highs then we pause and we put in a doji yes i know that many of you are going to be going that's not a perfect doji it's not perfect doji but it's not far off a little bit of a tail a little bit of a wick small body um you know classic doji just a line open and the close is the same but it's close enough on this when you look at the range of the prior candles and that's basically saying yeah indecision but more than that it's hey there's no supply coming in here it's just pure demand 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 the sellers have got ample opportunity to start selling stock here at 878 they don't what happens we get a subsequent bull run after that so something to watch out for guys how important the doji is same again on this sun run same type of thing the position of the doji the most important thing position of the doji at highs here and then it went and gave an extra kind of eight dollars yes it's rolled over from there but the point is it's the good strength and then the kind of sit the pause the weight the push on there's so many examples where the doji does this so keep an eye out for uh for your doji um we've got here we kind of see you know a little bit of a drive higher um it's it's, it's almost you know the three methods type uh, uh, candlestick i want to kind of show you this as well because it's not perfect but what i like about this again this is why we kind of go under the bonnet and we think about what the supply and demand is doing with each of these setups that we're looking at each of these patterns we're looking at big drive push through multi highs here multi-month highs here yes it's not all-time highs but strength 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 and then yes we gap up and we push a little bit higher but the point is three days in four in fact and it doesn't even encroach onto the kind of lower half of that drive that's the key to this guys that's the that's the the essence of the pattern it's saying hey if sellers can't even push it over a three-day period half of the range of the day one of the bull run what's that telling you it's giving you a little bit of insight and lo and behold after that you had a good 20 dollar run uh, from there um uh, another kind of uh one for you here guys the um you know the three uh, white soldiers i know they're green candles but we've talked about the names of them before the strength of the hold and then the drive you know this is kind of the sort of thing you want when we're at fresh highs after multi-month highs there's a gap to fill there from a technical perspective but it's three candles good strong candles in one direction the pause and the continuation why i said you don't like buying on the third candle at the high because you end up always getting some kind of rotation back always some kind of pullback another great example here from hibbit hibbit sports push to highs very aggressive the three strong solid bar candles or solid range candles opened at low closed at highs bang 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 three that's a sign of strength i don't like the textbook way of buying at highs i don't like that and look very often you get a pullback but if you wait one day buy on red and the, the the kind of seed has been sown in the first three days the buyers are backed off the throttle sellers are taking a little bit of advantage obviously you don't want that coming right into the range that's not a bad little setup that one then you're buying it then you're looking for a further push high if you're a little bit passive and a little bit concerned by all means buy on the subsequent break so get the third day high wait for retracement then wait for the bid to come in then buy the break i prefer to buy on the red after seeing uh that type of strength all right guys and then we've got a little kind of doji scenario here as well for you on tesla pushed up high pushed to highs this is one of kind of the early breaks in the summer uh, and just sits at highs and this is the key again it's price position that makes the doji so powerful if you go back to mid-may you've got doji 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 because it's just sitting in range no one cares about it now people care when we've bid from 200 up to 280 in a few days and then we're just sitting there with indecision at highs well hang on a second supply demand imbalance has been way skewed to demand massive bids coming in massive buyers pushing higher and then we're dogeing in the top 10 percent of the last four day move well that's telling you something again under the bonnet we're saying hey look buyers are really really keen here um we're expecting them to come back on the throttle sellers aren't that interested they've got the opportunity to sell all the stock in the world at 280 they're not taking it buyers are just waiting and when they don't see a little bit of a discount what happens next day bang bid comes in pushes and the rest is history so some examples there guys uh on the charts of some of the candlestick patterns uh that we talked about all right guys those were some examples for you if you like this video a thumbs up is much appreciated as are your comments of course uh, your share subscribes all that other good stuff you want to check out our channel sponsors the link to the description below okay bye bye